Hi all, Mucky with the Exiles, uh, joined by John uh, from Exiles in Barking. And in this quick video, uh, we want to talk about um, the reasons why we see the hands low in the pre-fight um, of the uh, dagger stuff in Fury's work. So we, sh we are shown five uh, poster in the dagger section, um, and all of those have, their, uh, have the arms low. Now there's probably 80% of the reason um, is, is pretty obvious and we'll get to that in a moment but there's lots of little reasons as to why it's advantageous to keep the hands low uh, in a dagger fight and by low what I mean is we're not looking to fight like this we're not looking to fight in a sort of boxing stance we're not looking to fight with the arms high um, until you've come into the engagement and we'll talk about that a little bit too I also want to talk about an example uh, from Fury's first Master of Dagger which we uh, list as the ninth play where you will see both hands high and you'll see the opponent grabbing the left hand I want to quickly talk about why that technique looks the way that it does and why it's not starting with the arms high so let's get into it okay. the most obvious reason is that I can attack his hands things I can do if he sends his attack in I've got a simple cover and thrust if he sends the attack in again yeah I'm less predictable because I'm coming from down low so instead what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play the game I'm gonna throw this up and that's how we get the play So first of all, we're going to look at this uh, dagger versus uh, dagger versus dagger. So if John is my opponent and he's fighting with the arms high, okay, the most obvious reason is that I can attack his hands, okay, um, and I can do that from lots of different positions. So if we're moving and whatever, yes, he can hit me, but I can also I can also hit his hands really really easily. And with a very pointy, very sharp rondelle, that's just a very tempting, very tempting target. Because of the distance that we're looking to fight at, because ultimately I want to be able to strike him in his body, in his face, etc. This distance means that if his arms are up, they're so easy for me to snipe at without any kind of action from the feet, okay? Which means that sniping attack is going to be very, very fast. Now I've made the argument in previous videos that people don't snipe in anger, so we're looking at a slightly different type of fight. But of course, if the hand is such an incredibly viable target, it's going to make a very nice incidental thing to hit on the way to killing him. So that is a very big part of the reason why uh, we, are, we are starting with our hands low uh, with the dagger work. And notice I say starting, of course if you're defending and attacking your arms are going to come up high, but that's not what we're talking about. At that point the fight has already started. Before that point you're using the positions that were shown, the poster, and we're trying to find some distance to work in, okay? And that distance is also a really big factor here because with unarmed for example you are going to obviously be close enough to grapple and to, to wrestle and to touch each other yeah of course you are you're going to be at this at this sort of distance okay but obviously without a dagger there's not as much risk with sword obviously you know it's just you know a weapon that can cause you just as much damage if not a bit more damage than a dagger can arguably but you're going to obviously start a little bit further away with dagger fighting, you're fighting in the mid-range, okay? Which means your reaction times are severely reduced, but you obviously have the risk of that sharp dagger in, uh, in play, okay? So because of that distance, we are having our hands low and we have to work much harder at working to the right distance because ultimately, I don't want to be in a position where John can just snipe at me, okay? Because my reaction time is gonna be really, really reduced. As I've just said, and as I've said many times before, people don't snipe in anger anyway, okay? But what I want to do is find the sweet spot, the just the perfect distance where I'm close enough to tempt John to hit me, but ideally he would have to step to make it a significant attack, okay? And the reason why that's so important is because that distance is such a, I use the phrase sweet spot, and that's probably the best phrase to use, because it's right on the edge of the distance where he can hit me without a step, but I'm not close enough where he can snipe at me. I'm trying to force the right kind of attack in case it's a non-committal opponent. We're going to come back out into distance because I want to show you how I have a default, basically a default defense from every single position that my arm will find itself in. This is before I get to techniques and before I get to masters of reactive stuff, okay? The whole premise of my approach to dagger, and it is my favorite bit of the whole system, it's probably the bit that I'm the best at, 
is because my whole premise is to, to effectively apply your art in an environment, you have to be really comfortable with that environment. I spent my whole life, smaller than everybody else, because I was this big when I started, I spent my whole life with people coming down on top of me with a dagger, really, really close, where they've got all of the reach advantage and I've got none. Okay, so this is, I'm building this up in basically the same way that I learned myself, right? So, take a step back, okay? He's gonna have a dagger in his hand, we'll just pretend for a second to have the mask on, and you're going to do exactly this, right? Dagger attack comes in, you're gonna basically cover this line, regardless of what happens next, you're gonna always take your arm around their arm and touch your own arm. That's it, okay? If the dagger attack now realistic off of the, uh, so with your right arm, if it's to this side, I just cover a line of attack, round the arm, touch my arm, right? And it, we'll do this low as well in a second. So nice and low, cover line of attack. This is not perfect, this is oh shit, reactive. Round the arm, touch the heart. Yeah, and then the same on this side. So if you're attacked, then I mean, it's rare you do that kind of attack, but round the arm, touch the heart. Now, if I, and we've done this quite a lot, so I've got loads of strips like this. If it's a low one, yeah, coming in, touching the heart, that is a strip, that's a disarm. Yeah, same from the other side, yeah. Cover line, oh my god, what happened there? What the f is going on? Oh shit, I'm used to this. Round, and I've got control of the dagger, okay? Pull it away, pull it away, it's hard to pull it away. I can do stuff with this. Yeah, from the high attacks. Cover the right, it's not perfect, it's crude, I don't care, I'm not going for anything fancy, no ligadura, this is a default, touch my heart, out of position. And then lastly from the other side, ah, cover the line, round right the arm, touch the heart. I don't care about anything down here, I don't care about incidentals or whatever, because this is a reactive oh shit moment, right? Only an idiot will expect not to get hurt in some way. Give that a practice. So nice and close, cover all good default options, but they appear everywhere. I always fall back to little things like that when I have a brain fart, okay? So for example, for example, comes in, I try and do a perfect first master dagger, right? Now let's say I've been a bit slow, or he's just really good at this, and he swaps side on me. What have I got? I don't always have third master to fall into. I've missed that completely. Does it mean I stop? No, I've got a default, haven't I? Yeah. And again, he's only there for a second. I'm not like, whoa, I'm winning. I'm onto the dagger. I'm stabbing him with it. Other reasons to have your hands low, okay? As well as sort of working to that distance, wanting to force your opponent to make a step so that you can react to it, okay? The stuff I've just talked about. Well, having my hands low means I can defend high and I can defend low too. So I've not got a dagger now, I've just taken a pot of ferro as we've shown, but I can defend, I can defend up high, and if he's thrusting or whatever, I can defend down low. And I'm coming from familiar positions to make that happen, okay? If my hands are high, okay and he thrusts low it's a very you know i've got to come down on top of the weapon which isn't necessarily a bad thing but obviously it's taking a little bit of the time advantage away that i might have from already having my hands low okay so having my hands low it's just a much easier it's just a much easier place to be the other thing too and this does go back to what i just mentioned about abritsarian sword is taking a line so with abritsari yes you're a bit closer it's important sometimes to take a line so you'll take up posture longer and you'll you'll be using this as an offensive action but you're also forcing your opponent to come around your arm okay so you're giving yourself time to think you're giving them a physical and mental barrier same with a sword, okay? If we're using sword play, sometimes it's quite advantageous to force your opponent down a certain line. But obviously with sword, you're initially starting further away, so you have more reaction time. This changes with dagger. It's really counterintuitive, but you want to avoid forcing your opponent down a certain line. And a big part of the reason for that is keeping your options open because we're that much closer. You'll notice I talk about distance a lot. I did a video earlier in the year where I talked about the importance of Fury's Dagger and distance is by far and away the most important factor. Okay, so this a lot of this comes back to distance, which should be pretty obvious to be honest. So I don't necessarily want to close a line. Okay, you could argue that being in this poster here, if we swap sides, being in this poster here, I am kind of forcing down the line anyway. But really it's about trying to keep my options open. Because I'm at the sweet spot where he has to just step, he could just barely reach me without a step. I want him to step. Okay, I'm working in this sweet spot, this 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 magic dagger distance, let's call it. Um, I don't want to close a line down, okay? Because if I'm closing a line down, okay, I'm just taking away lots of options. I'll go back to unarmed, okay? So unarmed versus dagger. Having my hands low and working at this sweet spot means that I can react to multiple different attacks, okay? Especially because I'm forcing the step. So as he's coming up, I could 
left hand first master yeah if i'm a little bit more offset and he comes up i can easily just drop in to second master i'm keeping my options open and i'm always forcing that step if i'm closing a line well obviously the hand is a target as we've just discussed but intrinsically he's not really going to think about attacking this side unless he's, he's got absolutely no idea what he's doing because it's such a long way for him to come and I've already got a tool to use okay so with dagger work it's really it's, as I say it's counterintuitive but it's not advantageous to close off a line certainly not with your limbs okay you can certainly you can do it with your body you can force certain actions by your positioning but that's a, a different topic a different video Another important reason is about reducing uh, how predictable you are for your opponent um, as well. If I'm just taking up a line, if I'm fighting high or taking up a line, um, he it, obviously knows that I'm going to be using these hands. Okay, If I'm taking up this action, for example, Posta Longa, or, or even if I have my own dagger here, okay, and this arm is high, he knows as soon as he does his attack, he knows which hand is going to be making that cover. Okay, He knows. Okay, So he has to think about the kind of attack that he wants to make. And remember, I want to try and force him into a predictable attack to make it easier for me. So I don't want to be too predictable for my opponent. With my hands low, there's lots of different things I can do. If he sends this attack in, I've got a simple cover and thrust. If he sends the attack in again, yeah, I'm less predictable because I'm coming from down low. He's also going to have a little, in a similar way to boxers as well, throwing low strikes, okay? Coming from low, it's going to be a little bit more difficult for him to kind of see the action, see the angle that I'm taking, see the defense that I'm trying to do. If my arms are already high, not that we would ever fight like this, but as an example, you know, it's, it's pretty predictable for him. He knows as soon as he attacks, he knows he's just going to grab it and hit me. Yeah, so I'll keep them low. I'll stop that kind of thing from happening. And then, and then my attack and my defense and my attack is a little bit less predictable for him as well. So that's another really important reason. So in the works of Fury, we start with our arms low, just to avoid any confusion. Of course we'll bring them up when we do our own attacks, of course we'll bring them up when we do our own defences, of course we will. But we're starting low for those reasons I've just mentioned, and we're trying to make this video quick. There's, there's more to it than that. One thing I want to quickly talk about is the, uh, as, I, as I mentioned, the ninth play of the first Master of Dagger, where you'll basically see your opponent has taken hold of your left hand, or uh, I'll do the play, so you grab, you, you grab hold of mine, drop your dagger. Okay, you'll basically see this position in the manuscript, okay, where he has grabbed my left hand. Now, um, sometimes this is used as a, well, I've seen it recently, which is kind of what prompted this video, as almost um, justification, I suppose, for starting with your hands high. This play is not about starting with your hands high and him just grabbing it, okay? Because that would be a, a, a completely wasted action for him. If he just grabbed that hand, I would just stab him. <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's not supporting the idea that we fight with our arms high. Incidentally, there isn't a single image of it from any manuscript that I'm aware of, any dagger system from multiple periods uh, where people are starting with their arms high. Okay, in my view, the few instances where there are images of arms high, something has already happened, but that's a different conversation. So let's talk about this play. I am starting low, okay? Now, he is a trained person. I would have assessed this. Maybe there's been a couple of exchanges already or whatever, okay? If I stick this out, I know he's gonna defend against it, okay? Of course he is. So instead, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play the game. I'm gonna throw this up and that's how we get the play, okay? This is basically a deception, okay? If he takes the bait, that's perfect, over we go, okay? If he doesn't take the bait and he grabs hold of the right arm, that's absolutely fine too. I've now got Posta Frontale in play. I've got all my options here to carry on my attack, but it's worth a shot, right? We're moving, yeah, I just throw this up. Look, that's how we get it, bosh, bosh, no problem. So that's that play as an example. Um, and there are a couple of others very similar to that as well, but that's why the arms are high. I didn't start with them high, okay? Because why, why would he do that? Why would he just grab that? He'd just come for the, the thing that's gonna hurt him. <clears throat> the last reason is just to talk a little bit about psychology, and this, this could be a very expansive point, so I'll just, I'll be very brief with this. But coming from low is quite unassuming, okay? Remember, I wanna work in that sweet spot, that, that, that perfect distance for dagger fighting. It's gonna get messy, it's gonna get unpredictable, of course it is, but I want to at least give myself all the advantages. Coming from low, what I'm basically doing is, is I'm, I'm keeping all of this open for my defense, okay? I'm making it hard for him to predict that defense, but what I want to do is I want him to step in and hit me properly. If we're here in the medieval market and he's pulled out a dagger on, on all the rest of it, I want to have a predictable attack, okay? As I've said millions of times, and I'll always say it because I think this is a really misunderstood point, but people don't snipe in anger. That being said, people are tentative in anger, okay? And I want the kind of attack 
to be the right sort of attack that I can work off of it, which means I want it to be committed. I want him to take a long line, as long a line as possible. Obviously, if I'm five feet away, he's not going to attack me, okay? So coming from my unassuming position, I want to find myself at the measure where he suddenly now thinks he can hit me, and I want him to travel the longest possible distance. I want him to think I'm going to go right through this guy, which makes it easier for me. It makes his attack cleaner. It makes it less likely he's going to change direction. It makes it more likely he's going to be committed and Fury's system works on committed attacks, okay? So it's a little bit about psychology. Down here he thinks, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna wipe this guy, no problem. That's exactly, that's exactly what I want. I want him to take the long distance, I want him to think he's got a perfectly good target, off he goes, makes my life easier. So a non-exhaustive video, as we're trying to do a lot of these at the moment, um, we could talk more about this, but there are some reasons why in Fury's works and indeed dagger fighting in general, you want to initially keep the hands low, okay? And that, that first reason is probably 80% of the reason why, okay? If his hands are high, if he's fighting with the hands high and we're at this sweet spot where we can both now start thinking about hitting each other, that's bosh, yeah? I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna smash his hands to bits. So that's the reason, okay? Hope it was useful and until the next one. Let's do, uh, I like a bit of a tangent, let's do a little bit on disarms, right, real quick. Because they're really important. If you take the dagger off them, they can't stab you with it. So, uh, we'll do it from 4th Master, we'll do the two disarms of 4th Master. We'll just do them straight up and then we'll add a bit of texture. So, strike comes in, 4th Master, oh shit, modified flinch reactions. exactly what it's for, remember the vlog though. I always go one side of my head, or if I want this side of his body, I'll go this side of my head. I don't care about this, okay, care about that. So if he punches me, I'm not bothered. It's just tough, right? So, first of all, it's like that, okay? So, the strip we're gonna do to start off with is we're gonna control the wrist, and we're basically just gonna take hold of this, we're gonna pull this down, and push this up, but we're gonna do it as the whole motion comes down, right? I have pretty high success rate with this strip, because what I'm not doing is hold on to it, trying to push it out. Not gonna work. Work. Remember, I've been doing this since I was very small. It's not going to work as a fully grown person when you're very small. Okay? So like this. So what I started to do was push, pull, but as a whole action come down. And then look, his left arm is not a bother to this anymore. I can stab him now. Yeah. Whereas if I do it like high, first of all, it's a struggle. And even if I do get it, yeah, you don't really that too. But let me get it. Just pretend. Let me get it. Let me get it. Yeah, he can still cover it because his, his left arm is still in play. Little things with dagger, little things. Strip it, put it back. Now, if you find, excellent. Where is it? Big gun. Right, all the stuff we've been learning, yeah? Right, so, let's see if it works first of all. Yeah, it's not gonna work. Right, tough tits, I've got to deal with it. So, I'm gonna bring it down, because you're preempting now, so relax a little bit. Bring it down, but it's not gonna work. So what are my options? Turn, 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 turn. that'll work, yeah? Give it a go. Work for the script first, okay? Thanks, buddy. Sorry, I keep